Y'all ready for story time? This is a true story. And it has to do with a spam holler in the track. Page 213. Okay, I was I was struggling with my faith at the time. I was working for a team owner that was really the team, there was some stuff going on with the team. Even though we had sponsors, and I had been working my butt off getting sponsors and taking care of the sponsors, the team owner was not an honest person. And they were confiscating a lot of the money from the sponsors and spending them on themselves instead of paying the team. And the team had gone without paychecks. Uh, the morale of the team was really going down. Um, and we were, I was trying to keep everybody pumped up, keep my driver pumped up, you know, and, um, I talked to little Joe about sponsoring the team and he was like, no, I want to buy it. I want to buy the team. Well, the team owner wouldn't sell it. And this the guy that was owning the team was just being really dishonest. And so it, I was in a really tough spot with my faith. I was really doubting myself. I was doubting even while I was in NASCAR, you know, was this guy working with this shifty guy, you know, he wasn't taking care of the team. And okay. so here it is, page 213, chapter seven, faith over fear, or no, fuel up in faith. I will pray that we'll speak. Here we go. <clears throat> My faith began to waver. The stress level began to come back and pressure me to produce was intense. The sponsor had paid us by the sales lead generated at the track by the fans. I was working nonstop to get more leads and to do more events and keep the sponsor checks coming weekly to the team owner so we could keep racing each week. The main sponsor on the car at the time was Cape Canaveral Cruise Line. My driver was Todd Bodine. The car was number 88, 88 car. We were in the Bush Grand National Series. And the main sponsor was paying us by lead generation, which meant I had to put all these show cars out front of the track. We were at Charlotte. I had to put all these show cars out front of the track, and I hired all these college students to people get people to sign up to win a free cruise. And then I paid the college students a dollar per lead, and then I would FedEx the leads, people's addresses and phone numbers, to the cruise line. Uh, overnight, and they would pay us ten dollars per lead or twenty dollars per lead, and we were we were getting thousands and thousands and thousands of them, and they would call up people and see if they wanted to buy a cruise and you know things like that. Um, but every time the check was coming in from the sponsor, the team owner was putting it in his pocket, and he wasn't paying the bills on the team, and he wasn't paying us. Well, we had an associate sponsor that was spam. They gave us some money and mainly they gave us free food, right? They fed the team. I was trying to get more money out of them. But then little Joe of uh, little Joe's autos, he wanted to come and buy the team. And I was really good friends with Joe. And so all this was happening and I was just trying to figure out what to do. Okay. So my faith was wavering. The stress level, I was under a lot of stress because it was my job to keep money coming into the team. The team was getting mad. There were guys that wanted to quit. Um, I was trying to keep my driver focused. You know, I had a lot going on. I was, I was the PR director, the marketing director. I was working nonstop to get more leads and do more events and keep sponsor checks coming in weekly to the team owner so we could keep racing each week. I seemed to have forgotten what I had learned from Miss Jackie and the Bible study and began to backslide again. So my faith was really struggling. The sharks began circling around me and I felt compromised. Like I was starting to compromise, like just take any deal I could take. And it, it, it wasn't good. It was, it was, I was in a bad place. I was compromised and miserable. The team owners were struggling too. They were, they were having a hard time paying the employees, including me. I was going without a paycheck. It, it was tough. We would go to the bank to cash our paychecks and the bank would not cash them. Many times our driver, Todd Bodine, would pull money out of his personal account to pay the team's salaries and buy tires when the team owners cannot. 
I would try to keep encouraging the guys on the team, but because we could not pay our bills, team morale was horrible. So here's the thing. If you're going to get a job in NASCAR racing, you really need to get with an established team that's got a good, solid sponsor. Um, you know, you're going to get paid. And that's why I learned a lot of lessons from this. You know, don't go to work for some of the new team owners because, you know, you really want to be with an established team. And this team owner was new. And so if anybody that wants to get a job in NASCAR today, um, I, I make sure, you know, go with established teams. You know, they, they've been in business a couple of years. <clears throat> um, team morale was horrible. They had families to feed too. It was a very dark and uncertain time. I was burning out quickly. I literally wanted to walk away from racing and do something else. Walk away from everything I had known and worked for. Walk away from my dream. And I put, put teachings in here. Stay connected to your faith source. It's your fuel. You are going to need it when you least expect it. At that time, my faith source was my mentor, Miss Jackie Pegram, and the Bible study. And I, it was important that I didn't backslide from that. And I stayed connected to that faith source. And it's part of the reason I become a mentor today. Because I want to be that faith source connection for people so they don't backslide. Weeks later, the team and I had a race at Charlotte Motor Speedway. It was a huge event. We had show cars and booths manned with college students working all leads over the, all over the track facility in high traffic fan areas. I had been up since 5 a.m. getting my promotional teams set up outside the track and then went back inside the track in time to do team PR. My, drive, my driver, Todd Bodine, was doing well. We were really fast in practice and getting ready to qualify for the race. I went to the team hauler to get some notes together for the press. And then I was going to head over to the media center. All of a sudden, I saw out of the corner of my eye, the man who sold team parts and built the frame of the race car, the chassis of our race car. He had two fully uniformed county sheriffs with him. Yeah, there were sheriffs. sheriffs. As I began to work, walk over to our hauler, I saw they had paperwork and they were asking one of our crew members where the owner of the team was. Another deputy sheriff came forward and was trying to tape off the area with police tape. Now, this is in the middle of a NASCAR garage area. Thousands of people, TV cameras, and I'm the PR person. I'm the one that's supposed to make the team look good and the sponsors look good. And I got a bill collector showing up with two sheriffs fully uniformed with paperwork taping off everything with police tape i'm like oh uh oh <laughs> i knew we had trouble <laughs> the press started getting curious and came nosing around with their notepads and cameras this is before everybody had an iphone so 1996 97 Charlie Motor Speedway, TV, ESPN, NBC. We were in Charlotte, so every local paper was there, every newspaper. I, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I went up to the parts man and said, Sir, I represent this team. What is this about? I'm like 5'3, okay? I'm just a little, right? Now, remember, it was Ron Hutchison of Hutchison's Race Cars, and he, he built the car. He was a big, tall guy. And he said he was there to confiscate and repossess the race car. He had an outstanding bill for over $50,000 that was owed to him for the building of that race car chassis and all the parts that were on it. He had a court order, and the sheriffs were there to seize the car. I will never forget this. 
<laughs> right there and then in front of everyone during a huge NASCAR race event at Charlotte Motor Speedway. We're getting ready to go out and qualify for the race. I knew instinctively in my spirit I had to step into action. The media was getting curious. I had a major PR crisis on my hands for my sponsor, my team, and my driver. I said in my heart, God help me. I need your help right now. Give me a solution here. Give me wisdom. I took a breath and I said out loud, sir, can you give me just one hour? Let me talk to my team owner and get this straightened out. I'm asking you for my team, my crew. These are good, hardworking guys, and this would devastate them. They've been through a lot. I mean, it was the Holy Spirit speaking through me. He agreed. They would be back in one hour. The deputy stopped putting up the tape and went away with them. I went to the media and I said, all is well, all is well. We have everything under control. And then the media walked away too. <laughs> Deep breath. Oh, okay, Lord. I have a major moment here. Guide me on this. I ran. That's back when I could run really fast. And I had some good tennis shoes. <laughs> and my khaki pants and my logo polo shirt. I was all official, you know. I ran into our huge race hauler all the way to the air-conditioned lounge area. My team owner was hiding out up there. He knew what was happening. He did not have the money to pay the man that would take the race car right in front of everyone before the race. I said to him, where is all the money from the sponsors that we have been bringing in for you? He just shrugged his shoulders. I was mad. <laughs> Another deep breath. I had to pull up from the reserved fuel of my faith, my reserve tanks of faith. I felt Holy Spirit boldness take me over. I said to the team owner, okay, I'll tell you what, I took charge. I mean, I took charge. Holy Ghost took charge. I'm telling you, we, Holy Ghost, he was speaking through me. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. I know someone who wants, wants to buy a race team. He is here with his, his wife as a guest at the Spam. Yes, that's Spam in a can. Hospitality tent. I knew him from when I worked on the 55 car. He used to be one of our sponsors. I continued. His name is Joe Falk. He owns Little Joe's Autos in Virginia. Virginia. And he can pay off this bill today. Will you sign ownership of the team over to him? The team owner looked at me for a minute. And he must have seen the boldness in my face. I'll tell you what, I, I wasn't messing around. I was like, you don't want choice. I wasn't messing around. He must have seen my boldness and I was taking authority. I mean, I knew I was the Holy Ghost. The team owner looked at me for a minute. He must have seen the boldness in my face. I was not playing. I wasn't playing around. I was serious. I stared back at him, not flinching. I mean, I was standing my ground. And said, well, you are about to be shamed in front of your entire team, your driver, all of NASCAR, and the media. The media's out there waiting 
to film this entire thing on ESPN. You will never be able to do business in this garage area again. Like, you'll be done. And it's not looking good here. <laughs> I asked them to give me one hour. They will be back. Okay, the team owner said. Go get Joe. If he can write a check to pay this off in full to the parts man, I will sign over the team to him. He just, he said he couldn't do it anymore. I nodded. That I shot out of that trailer like a bolt. I mean. I told my crew chief to just keep everything calm and normal. I would be right back. I ran so fast to that spam tank. <laughs> like I never ran before. I ran so fast in my life. I did. I still remember. My reputation was on the line too. But the love for my team members and their families. And my driver was on my heart. And the faith fuel reserves from months I had already spent with Miss Jackie and the Bible study were being tapped into. Lord Jesus, help me run faster. I knew the clock was sticking, ticking. I ran through the crews, the cars, and the crowds. I ran through the fans. I ran through the officials in the infield all the way to the fenced off VIP hospitality area. I had an all access pass <laughs> for all the areas that I usually walk through. <laughs> I was trying to look professional. <laughs> When I got to that area, because it was filled with corporate executives and major sponsors, I saw the spam tent, and it was connected to this big spam hauler. This tent came off the side of this truck, it had tables in it, everything under there. I saw the spam tent. Oh, Lord, play, please let Joe be there. I looked at my watch. Oh, it's in my watch. It was 12.15, lunchtime. Woo! Still had approximately 45 minutes before the sheriff will be back. I ran into the tent. There were a few people in line to get in. I went around to the side area where the, the tent tables were, where the tables were. I looked in and I saw that Joe and his wife were there happily munching on barbecue ribs and potato salad. Yes, Spam is owned by Hormel. It's owned by Hormel, not Armor. That's right. It's owned by Hormel. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's owned by Hormel. And they make, uh, they make Spam burgers and all kinds of other things. The area was bordered by a plastic fence and sponsor banner. So the area came up to about my little above my knees. I waved over to Joe, trying to get his attention. His wife Shirley saw me, and they're believers in Jesus. They they have a a used car. They have car dealerships up here in Chesapeake, Virginia. Uh, Joe Falk, Little Joe's Autos. I got my truck for Little Joe. Y'all know that story. Well, Joe had been a sponsor of our 55 car with Tim Fidoa for a couple of years before I went to this team with Todd Bodine. And Joe had been talking about owning a team for some time. He used to drive race cars. Good people. Love the Lord. And uh, wealthy. Wealthy. And um, I was trying to get Joe's attention. And I, and I see Shirley, and she's waves back at me. And uh, she's always dressed to the nines, right? Beautiful blazer. Always look nice. And 
And they both looked over and waved me in. I climbed over the plastic fence that was only knee high. I wanted, they wanted me to join them for lunch. <laughs> when they saw me, I was out of breath. I mean, here they are, you know, Joe and Shirley Falk, eating their ribs and their potato salad. <laughs> Leisurely day at the racetrack. Shirley's got her be beautiful yellow blazer on, always dressed to the nines, you know. And I'm like, <laughs> sweaty. They must have think I was like, what is wrong with her? <laughs> but, you know, Joe always had a sense of humor. All okay. right, Joe always calls me Anna Banana. <laughs> to this day, he calls me Anna Banana. He's just always called me that. My face is sweating from running. Of course, it's a tense look on my face. Joe says, what's up, Anna Banana? <laughs> Joe always called me that. And yes, this is the same Joe that 15 years later that I got my miracle red truck from. <laughs> Joe, I began trying to catch my breath. I have an offer here for you to buy a race team today, right now. He looked at his wife. Okay, I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> I told them about the current situation and that time was of the essence. They looked at me and then they looked at each other. Sweetheart, Joe says to his wife, Shirley, did you bring the checkbook? Yes, I did, she answered. Okay, then, said Joe. Let's go. We're buying a race team today. I wanted to sigh a sigh of relief, but then I realized we only had 30 minutes <laughs> to get back to the team hauler, draw up a quick agreement, and have Joe. Write the big $50,000 check to the parts man. Joe's wife stayed at the spam tent, and Joe and I quickly walked back. Joe's pretty tall, so he's got a pretty long stride. I was still running. Back to the team hauler. Then we had 20 minutes left to get there. We walked past the team working on the car. We did not have time to say a word. Straight back into the lounge area of the hauler. Joe and I put the fastest deal I have ever seen in all of my career in motorsports. It was literally a handshake de deal. The team owner called the parts man on his flip phone and asked for the exact amount owed that Joe Falk would be writing him a check and bringing it to him shortly, that he is now the owner of the team. Joe pulled the checkbook out of his back pocket and wrote the check to the parts man for the full amount. I then took my media notepad, wrote the date in a simple agreement. They both agreed and said they would get a business attorney that would draw up the official paperwork. Now that the former team agreed, former team owner agreed, Joe said, it's a deal. And I witnessed to it. Then Joe and I walked over to the parts man's booth truck. Inside the garage area, next to the NASCAR inspection area, the sheriffs were still there. We had five minutes left. Joe handed him the check and showed him the paperwork and asked him if he would keep it confidential for now, that everything was being made legal that week, and that Joe was the new team owner. Parts man agreed, took the check, wrote a receipt, and gave it to Joe. 
and called off the confiscation. They shook hands with Joe and said he was looking forward to doing business with him as the new team owner. The sheriffs then left. I sighed the sigh of relief. I've been running on my faith reserves. I then felt elated. I cannot believe what had just happened. I did not know I had that in me. Joe just looked at me and smiled and said, I'm going to go back to eating some barbecue ribs. I have a race team on the track this afternoon that the wife and I will be cheering for. Looking forward to coming to the shop and meeting the team this week. I was so moved by that gesture. Joe knew that it would be too much emotionally on the team right now, right before qualifying, for them to take this all in. And that they would have, have to have their mind on racing and winning. Not all with this drama and distraction. I knew that he was going to be a great team owner in NASCAR. He is still a team owner in NASCAR to this day. Yes. <sighs> it's been close to 20 years now. I know because I could never run that fast though. <laughs> As for me, I went back to the holler. Told my team all was well. I finished my job at Charlotte Motor Speedway that weekend and made sure that Joe made a smooth transition to the team owner the next few weeks. Spam became the main sponsor of the team and brought in their own marketing people. I needed a break anyway. I decided to step back from the team PR and marketing track side and work as a consultant from my home. That was a good start to my consulting and coaching career. Looking back, this was a defining, mo defining moment, needing immediate solution in an emergency. Wow. Did God really come in and come through big time? While writing this chapter and remembering the moment, God is reminding me to get intentional. When you are needing an immediate breakthrough or miracle, go back to these moments when God did it. When he did it before, he can do it again and even greater. After that moment with God saving the race team from confiscation and embarrassment, I wanted to get back to work on my faith and my relationship with God and learning his word. I wanted to get back to Miss Jackie, my mentor, and ladies' Bible study. I wanted to get fully tapped back into my faith and fuel my faith fuel resource, and stay filled up. Faith over fear, my friends. And this was an excerpt from my book, Faith at Full Speed, your high horsepower manual to success. It comes from all my years of working in NASCAR. The Holy Spirit wanted me to write this book, everything he taught me. And, um, 15 years later, when Mike and I moved to Virginia and I saw no way to buy a truck or a new vehicle, uh, went to all the dealerships, they turned us down. We went to the biggest Ford dealership in 
Chesapeake. And they turn us down because we didn't have any credit. We just didn't have any credit at all. And it was a rainy day. And I remember, and I put the story in here, and I remember I didn't even think about Little Joe. But God remembered. And at that time, Little Joe had turned his car dealership into a Mitsubishi dealership. And Mike and I were looking for a Ford pickup truck. And we went to the Ford dealer, Cavalier Ford in Chesapeake. And there was a guy there that didn't normally work there that day. And I remember he had this fishing hat and a fish hook and everything and on his hat. And he said, listen, y'all come outside here. I want to talk to you. And it was raining. And he says, listen. We had been so many dealerships and I knew God was going to give us our truck. I knew he was. I was faithful. And we have been going to the obvious places. We kept getting no, 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 no. And I had seen little Joe in a long time. I had seen her in a long time. And um, that guy that was working in the Ford dealership, he brought us outside and he said to me and Mike, he's like, listen. Go over to Little Joe's Autos. My buddy just got a truck over there. And I go, Little Joe? I, go, I know Little Joe. I've known him for years. I just moved here to Virginia. I, I haven't connected back with him. And Mike's like, well, doesn't he sell Mitsubishis? And, you know, he's like, listen, go over there. Look and see what's on his lot. He's got some used cars. He says, my, my buddy got a real nice truck there. And he'll, he won't care about, you know, if you don't have any credit. And I thought to myself, God said he's going to bring us, us a truck today. And we're going to go over there. And I remembered this. And Mike and I went over to Little Joe's. Not any, any other park trucks on the lot. It was raining. And so we went inside. And I said, you know what? I said, I'm just going to say hi to Little Joe. I haven't seen him in a long time. I'm going to see if he's here. So I went up to the lady. And I said, is Joe Falk here? And she's like, uh, no, but he'll be back in about 15, 20 minutes. And I said, oh. I said, I'm an old friend of his from NASCAR. I just want to say hello. And my name's Anna Marie. And da, 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 da. She's like, okay. So Mike and I, we stayed in the dealership. And we're, you know, just waiting to say hello to little Joe and just to say hello. And I was walking around the dealership and there was a trophy case. And I walked over to the trophy case and there was a picture of me. And Tim Fidoa, our driver in the 55 car, all of us with little Joe and Shirley right there in the trophy case, all of us together when we, he was a sponsor on that car and we won that race together. And I knew, I felt the Holy Spirit. I just knew. I said, okay, Lord, your will be done here. Your will be done. And I just released it to God. A few minutes later, I hear, hey, Anna Banana. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> oh, Joe. I mean, we hadn't seen each other in several years. I was just like, we were old pals again. He says, what are y'all looking for? And Mike told him what we were looking for. And he goes, go get you a cup of coffee. I have your truck here in 15 minutes. Something about that 15 minutes. And it was everything I had on my vision board. And Mike and I had prayed for. I'd put a white pickup truck on my vision board. And I'd draw two red hearts on it for me and Mike. And I was believing God for it. And 15 minutes later, a red Ford pickup pulled up in front of the dealership. Read the blood of Jesus. and. They had us, it, it was just everything that we were believing God for, the price, everything. Within an hour, they had us sign everything. And and the first payment of that truck was on Valentine's Day, which the two hearts, I mean, it was just all God. And um, we never missed a payment. God made sure. And we still have that truck today. And that truck has been on hundreds, hundreds. Of land prayer assignments praying all over the state of Virginia. A 
That's God. My friends, be encouraged in your faith. Be encouraged in your faith. For there is no way God will make a way. Be bold and courageous. Go boldly to the throne of grace. Ask him for it. Believe God for the impossible. And little Joe wasn't the savior. It was God. He just used Joe. And he used Joe the second time to remind me of the first time. If God did it for you before, he'll do it for you again. That's the only reason to look back on anything. Is did God take care of that situation before? He's going to do it again. He's building up your faith. He's building up your faith reserves, your faith fuel. He wants to fill it up and fill it up and fill it up and fill it up and fill it up till it's overflowing. And I'm so glad that I got to read this to you today. I know we had a lot of extra time today, but it was so important. And I'm thank, I thank Phil for sharing that picture of his family at the racetrack and reminding me of that because Christ is the victory. Because of Jesus Christ, we have everything that the kingdom has to offer. God has all your solutions right there. No matter how impossible they look, trust him and he will lead you to it. And you must partner with him in faith. And if he says, go here, run there, you do it. And do not doubt. And he will set these divine laborers in your path. And I got to tell you something. If you do it for me, he'll do it for you. Faith is faith. And it's faith that moves God. And remember, all of heaven is cheering us on. We're in a race, my friends. And God wants us to finish well. And throw off all that fear, all that yuck, all that worry, all that doubt. You know what? I'm still fast. I'm, I'm high full speed for the Lord. He's accelerated me by faith. I might not be able to physically run fast anymore, but I can obey quickly at lightning speed. <laughs> oh, God. And all of heaven is cheering you on, and I'm cheering you on. I love you all so much.